Well, welcome back to the 2021 ICF Canoe Sprint World Cup from Bernal in Serbia, Russia. Six Olympic quotas were up for grabs. Six different countries booked their tickets to Tokyo on the final day of ICF Global Canoe Sprint Olympic qualifiers. Lithuania, Croatia, Portugal, China, Moldova, as well as our hosts here, Russia, are the final pieces of the Canoe Sprint Olympic jigsaw. And now the focus turns to the World Cup 2 here in Barnau after successful World Cup 1 in Zeged last weekend. This is a final chance to tune up for the athletes that will be going to Tokyo 2020, although not all completely assured. In particular, the Lithuanian ticket will come down to the performances at this World Cup. A real battle between Maldonis and Sejas. So plenty of intrigue still for the Olympics. Otherwise, a chance for those left disappointed at missing an opportunity to spend this summer in the Japanese capital to try and earn some World Cup medals. Here's a timetable for afternoon start here in Russia. And a few athletes hoping to blossom at this event. And first up, the K1 Women's 200. World and Olympic champion Lisa Carrington awaits in Tokyo. Sadly, for the women in the lineup, no one able to make their Olympic dream come through, at least in the individual. Chance for some athletes to get over disappointment. Si Jung So will also be pairing up with her compatriots. <laughs> Stephanie Shen later on. Uh, Webby at six years old. Her first K1 race was the Atomic Atom Bomb Regatta. Hoping for an explosive race here. Chen, after narrowly missing out in the Asian qualifiers, doing again so here. Never medaled at a World Cup. Victoria Schwartz has already been to the Olympics. The Austrian in lane five. Lasma Lepa, Latvian born Turk. The first ever woman canoeist to represent Turkey at an Olympics. Melanie Anderson, 21 years of age, already won a silver in the K2 200 with Kapetrit Johansson and Jennifer Egan for the third time missing out on her Olympic dream, not quite as heartbreaking as the previous two times, but all the same. Tokyo, far away from the field. Let's be fair for the starting gun. Olympia Tosheva, 24-year-old Bulgarian. Olympian by name, hope to be an Olympian of the future. We try to hold position in what again are windy, challenging conditions. Shelva just taking a moment to try and reposition herself. So important to get a good start. And underway, the first time of asking in the K1 women's 200 meters. Schwartz trying to power away. Already winning K2 200 gold on the Olympic qualifying day. Looking for individual medal here. And certainly her golden boat shining down the middle. Egan being left behind. But now coming through in lane seven, Lepa of Turkey. Well, powering through. Amagino, 40 years of age, but it's a tight finish. And it will go by a nose. Well, Turkey 
appeared to get it on the graphic, but it was incredibly tight with Victoria Schwartz. And the Austrian, I think, took it. We'll wait for confirmation, but the 36-year-old Olympic finalist in Beijing with Yvonne Schuring, who she later won a world championship gold in 2011 in Zeged. But 32-year Lepa gave her a fright, but not enough to deny her World wow. Cup gold. Double medal delight for Schwartz as she takes gold in the women's K1 200. Victoria, congratulations. It's tough out there, but a good win. Thank you. It's my first K1 race in a very long time because usually I'm always in the double. And it was really, really nice to race here in Barnard. I loved it. Nice having a crowd too, isn't it, to cheer you on? Yeah, it's really nice and they're really loud, so you can hear them. They are amazing. <laughs> and you're going to the Olympics in the K2, which is exciting. Yeah, it's very excited. We got the spot this year in the double and we will race K2 500 at the Olympics and K1 500. <laughs> Congratulations. A nice Thank day you. for you. Well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> so a fine victory for Schwartz. And she edges Turkey's Lepa by just 0 0.02. Sabrina Ines Amadino of Argentina, 40 years of age, taking a bronze ahead of Melanie Anderson. So Swartz going to the Olympics. K2 mentioned already had a gold, adding a K1 gold. Podolskaya of Russia didn't start the competition having earned the Olympic place yesterday but our compatriot Alexander Dyachenko in lane one ahead of the K1 men's 200 final plenty of intrigue for Lithuania in a fight out for the Olympic spot between Min Daugis Maldonis and Artur Seja Diachenko, K2 200 meter Olympic champion and two time world champion. In fact, the reigning K2 world champion, like Schwartz, taking to the water for a rare occasion in K1. And as mentioned, Schwartz paying tribute to the fans here. A delight to see supporters back at these events. Really brings the life and color to the proceedings. And here is Mendogas Maldonis. He did what Seja couldn't, and that was earn the Olympic quota for Lithuania. But now the battle to see who will take it. Robert Akmens of Latvia, 2019 World FC gold medalist, and a former under 23 world champion. Peter Menning of Switzerland was 10th in the Rio final, 2013 World and European champion. And if we're looking at lane three, it's also lane five. Artura Seja, World and Euro silver medalist in 2018. Badri Kavaslashvili of Georgia, who unfortunately couldn't make Olympic quota in the women's event. Second Latvian from Janssen. 
Kane won 200 world silver medalists in 2017. Debajak, seventh sprint appearance, three of those in Seged. An eight time medalist in Wild Canoe, three times top of the world. And Kevin Santos making his first senior World Cup FA appearance. As mentioned, a couple Olympic competitors in the field, Diachenko, a K2 200 Olympic champion, Peter Menning of Sweden, 10th in the Rio final. But the real fight is either side of the Swede, Maldonis and Seja battling out for the quota earned by Maldonis yesterday. So eyes drawn to lanes three and five, but also who will get on the podium in this World Cup K1 Men 200. See how strong the wind is. But underway, the first time of asking, the crowd roaring on the K1 Men 200 final. And Seja looking to steal from Maldonis what his compatriot earned the ticket to Tokyo. Kamalashvili really roaring his way. And just slightly behind Seja. Necking neck with Swedes, Menning. And as they come to the line, Maldonis desperately trying to get ahead of his compatriot appears to have done it. The subplot to the K1 Men 200. But it's Sweden that are bearing their muscles. Maldonis. Knows exactly what his placing means. The main focus was getting ahead of Seja, but he's also won it. Well, a photo finish. And he gets the congratulations. He's not just taking the Olympic spot, but also World Cup gold. A stunning performance for Maldonis, who only went for his first individual at the Seged World Cup in 2020, finishing eighth in that final. He was ninth in the FA in Seged last weekend, Liam Heath winning that. But this time, he wins his first individual World Cup gold. And with it, a place at the Olympics, Peter Menning of Sweden, 0 0.04. He was flexing his muscles. They'll have to settle for silver. Well, Lithuania won their first canoe sprints Olympic medal at Rio in the K2 men's 200. Oh my God! Maldonis will have a chance. Congratulations again. Now, does that mean you're going? Yes! To yes! <laughs> Thank you! It must have been a very long 24 hours for you, wondering how yeah. this would go. Yeah, how it was. Very hard mentally, oh, thank you. Funny. Because there was a lot of emotions, a lot of people congratulating me with the Tokyo, with the ticket. But there's so much of them 
I couldn't respond, so I ignored all the social media. Thanks for waiting, because I needed to get my emotions straight. I can't be too excited. I can't be too, too sad. I needed to be in steady place emotionally. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Alessio. Social media blackout doing the trick from Aldonis. The outpouring of emotion as he earns not only a World Cup gold, but Lithuania's K1 200 spots at Tokyo. A world champion, Nevin Harrison, not here, but a quality field for the C1 women's 200, including young Croatian who helped make double history for her country at the Olympic qualifiers yesterday. A stunning performance from Vanessa Tot. Only 12 Croat Olympians in canoe, but Tot joining Gover Sinovic as the first Croatian women canoeist to earn an Olympic dream. Catrina Nuevo Segura, sure of a bright future for women's canoeing in Cuba. Only three silvers at Olympics for the country, all men. 2000 C1, C2, 1000, 2004 C2, 500. Maria Maillard, 30-year-old, qualified in both C2 and C1 for Tokyo. The one reallocated spot, not enough to fill a C2 boat. Japan not qualified in C1, so it went to the next C1 competitor. Poland, there is Tote alongside 19-year-old Cyrilo Dubos, C1 World Junior Silver Medalist at this distance. Juan Rocco of Chile will be back later on to pair with Maillard for the Chile 1-2. They won a bronze last World Cup in Seged together. Well, Karde Kashvili the one Georgian hope for an Olympic quota agonizingly came up short again as she did last week in the European Olympic qualifier. She was the quickest in qualifying for both finals, both times agonizingly missing out to Tote here in Bernal, second to Corbera of Spain in Zeged. She came eighth. For the World Cup 1 FA final. There she is in her hopes to try and get a medal on this occasion. I thought Shirley could just Go on and enjoy this race, having produced the result of the weekend. In her mind, the 22-year-old heading off to the Olympics with canoeist Kovon Sinovic. She's alongside 19-year-old Cyrilo Dubos, who finished second to Nevin Harrison. And the World Cup won last weekend, her first senior World Cup. A bronze in the C1 5000 and FB gold in the C2 500 with compatriot Nuevo Segura. So certainly lane five, one to watch. So the C1 women's 200 final underway. It's a fast start from Asiento and also home paddler Andreva of Russia. She's got a slight edge on Totes, but now the center of the field starting to ratchet up the pace. Cerillo 
looking to earn the gold that Nevin Harrison denied her last week. And absolutely powering to the line. The crowd roaring on. The Cuban teenager. As Andreva tries to get herself amongst the medals. But it's been a clean victory for Cerrillo. And it looks like Chile through my yard may have picked up a silver. We'll wait for the rundown, but no doubts about the gold silver last week. And in our second World Cup event, it's gold for Cerrillo. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. What a good race that was for you. Uh, what? How do you feel? Uh, I happy, very, very happy for my my medal. Oh I know again. Congratulations, well done. Thank you. Well, thankfully, she's got time to recover before returning to the water tomorrow, along with Nuevo Segura, when they take on the C2 Women's 500. But in the C1 200 final, Cirillo absolutely dominant. 0.56 seconds ahead of Maria Maillard, the Tokyo Olympian, finishing with silver ahead of Irina Andreva, who pipped Vanessa Tote to a bronze but the Croatian having done the hard work yesterday in earning one of six Olympic quotas that were up for grabs well despite the weather the support still feverant on the sidelines I think at the moment considering the fans have been locked out for so long it would take an almighty storm to stop them heading out to support the athletes. Well, the K1 Men 200 medal ceremony to take place. And then it'll be the turn of the C2 Men 500. And then K1 Men, K2 Women. Join us for that after the medal ceremony.
дамы и господа, церемония награждения второго этапа Кубка мира ICF на дистанции К1 Байдарка. Одиночка среди мужчин на 200 метров начинается. Ladies and gentlemen, award ceremony ICF World Cup for the distance K1 kayak single men 200 meters is starting. Награждение проводит генеральный секретарь Международной Федерации Каноэ Саймон Толсон. The medals will be awarded by General Secretary of the International Canoe Federation Simon Towson. Бронзовым призером становится. The bronze medalist is Robert Sackman's Latvia. Серебряным призером становится. The silver medalist becomes Peter Manning, Sweden. Золотым призером становится. The gold medal winner is. Миндауга Смалдунис, Литвения! Дамы и господа, прошу всех выразить признание медалистам второго этапа Кубка мира по гребли на байдарках и каноэ. Ladies and gentlemen, please express your recognition to the medalists in the second stage of the ICF World Cup in canoe and kayaking. reception for the K1 men medalists and Maldonis the gold medal winner as well as earning his spot at the Olympics this summer for Lithuania So next up, the C2 men's 500, Zheng and Li, world champions, along with a lot of top stars, sadly not here, COVID continuing to play its part, and also in the build-up, not just to the Olympics, but one of the most complicated games that will have been put on, not even 100% certainty will go ahead, more likely than not, the COVID certainly is something that's ever changing. So we see the start list for the C2 men's 500 final. Certainly plenty of focus on the Tarnovsky brothers. They failed to make their Olympic dream come true together. But Sergei managing to return to the Olympic fold in C1. 
although he admitted as much that it's not going to be an easy time. Every athlete delighted to get to a games. And, uh, it's been much harder during the disruption of COVID-19, but particularly for Sergei, who won a bronze medal in Rio, only to have it taken away after failing a doping test. This is shot at redemption. He did say it's not easy because four years, no competitions, training alone. But as mentioned, some athletes welcoming him, some not. And it's understandable there won't be a lot of sympathy for Sergei, who sits in the back of the two man boat. Oleg leading the way. Both won world medals in Milan 2015. Oleg a silver in the 500, Sergei bronze in the 1000. Older brother Oleg, also a world bronze medalist at the last world championships in Zeged, the three time Euro medalist. Certainly a reduced field here. Only the five boats two minutes two in attendance. Start. Two minutes. Stop your boat, please, and stay where you are for further instructions. Well, clearly, a request that's easier said than done in uh, even more blistery conditions than we even saw yesterday, as well as the rain. So desperately trying to keep warm, the Colombian boat of Sergio David Diaz, Daniel Alfonso Pacheco, Sipa Gauta. The Russian team, Petrov, 19 years of age, Romanov in the back, the elder at 20, part of the C4500 team to become 2019 junior world and European champions. Romanov also a junior approach. gold in the C2000. As they're called forward, there's Becky Boat, world bronze medalist at Sega 2019, on the podium with the Russian duo. Big chance of a repeat here. The real question is the color of the medal. Four must go into two. The second Uzbekistan boat not starting. So four battling for just three podium positions in the C2 men's 500. Ready, Underway, first time of asking for the C2 men 500 final, and it's a blistering start from the Moldovans. Very quickly, the other boats to the Moldovans' right, responding. And neck and neck in the opening of this final. Kuliev and Mama Daliev, as mentioned, world bronze medalists at the last world championships, but now it's Russia starting to gain an edge. Really keeping their path to victory, but the Uzbekis are now really powering. Moldova trying to hit back, Colombia being left behind in their wake. So the podium secure. It's now the color of the medal, Russia holding a very slender lead. As mentioned, half of the C4 500 that became 2019 Junior World and European Champions. Now at the senior level, trying to earn World Cup gold on home water. And the crowd certainly giving them all the support 
to give them that extra push. Almost all smiles as they try and hold on to a gold medal position. Petrov leading Romanov on the route to the top of the podium. Is there a final? Last chance for Aldova, though. Well, they just tried at the last moment to drive the boat forward to the line. But it looks like too little too late for the Tanoski brothers, who started the strongest. But in the end, it looks as if Petrov and Romanov doing enough for a home World Cup gold. smiles at the end the young Russian duo just holding out against the final push from the Moldovan duo the Tarnovsky brothers settling for silver Galiev and Mama Daliev of Uzbekistan way back in bronze with the Colombian boat out of the picture but it's the Russian duo who take gold. Uh, congratulations. Uh, it was a very close finish, but you won. Well done. Спасибо. Very hard race. Uh, thank you. My parents, my coach, my team. Oh. Would you like to say something in Russian to the fans? Ой, я не понимаю. Спасибо всем фанатам. Моя нереальная поддержка. Очень приятно было здесь участвовать, организация на высшем уровне. Всем спасибо за поддержку еще раз. Спасибо. Thank you. Well, the fans delighted not only with the result, but the kind words. And they're certainly making a right racket and delight to see their young Russian guns, Petrov and Romanov, hold off the Tarnovsky brothers by just 0 0.03. The Moldovans diving for the line, but just left with too much to make up. Galiev and Mama Daliev taking bronze. Well, certainly enjoying the return of spectators. And it's not been an easy task in challenging weather, but certainly they've made the effort ahead now. The K1 men 500. And the lineup ahead of the start. Certainly, Andrea Scherra of Italy looking to get over the major disappointment of missing out on a place at the Olympics. Brutally disappointing that he led for such a long time in that final, only to be pipped at the end by a stunning performance by Dong Zhang of China securing the K1000 meter quota for Tokyo so a chance for Skera to 
try and get over that disappointment. They won a K1000 FC bronze in 2019. They're looking for some World Cup success. Jakob Zavrel of the Czech Republic won his heat from start to finish. Finished third in the FC final last week in Zeged. 25 year olds and under 23 K1 500 European champion. Kowatse from South Africa, 29 year old, a K1 500 FB gold winner last weekend. But the last final A medal he won was back at the World Cup one in Poznan two years ago when he took a bronze. Well, the Belarusian, Vlad Silau, won the K2 men 500 FA final with his young compatriot, Sakaranka Raman, now looking for an individual gold. So underway in the men's K1 500 meter final. 21 year old Ulad Zilau looking for another one, but he looks out of it. He's already gone. Well, he seemed to stop and then start again. Now, well out of it. Lane five, going strong as expected from the Czech Republic, Zavrel. Looking to add to the bronze he won last week. That was in an FC final now, looking for top honours as a slender lead. He'll look to try and convert as he did in his heat. But it's a powerful run from Christian Kuetze of South Africa. Certainly put himself in place for a first FA medal in two years but so far Zavrel holding the slender advantage Schera of Italy with Coetzi and Zavrel at the moment holding the podium positions but he'll want to hit back in this 500 final but he's got a boat like to make up half a boat lead for Zavrel over Coetzi and it does look like Zavrel is going to medal for the first time in a World Cup FA. And it looks like it will be golden moment for the Czech. Right on the line. Koetsi looks to have held off Skera. But Zavrel did what he did in his heat and earns not just his first medal in an FC. FA final, but it's gold. Uh, Jakob, congratulations, you looked very comfortable there. Uh, that's nice that I looked, but I really wasn't. It was uh, 500 for me after a long time, so not my best race. I bet you win the gold and you kept the fans here excited. Uh, it's nice to hear a crowd, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's nice to uh, compete 
again in front of fans. Congratulations, Jakob. Well done. Thank you. Well, not his best race, but it's more than good enough for gold. 1.15 seconds ahead of Christian Coetzee, who held off Andreas Guerra as they make up the podium. Otun Novakovic missing out. Certainly enjoying the day out here in a wet and windy Barnal in Serbia, Siberia. Seen particularly at the start, competitors struggling to hold position and then battling the conditions for a straight line to the finish line. Next up, the K2 Women's 500. All champions hailing for Belarus, Hungary, the reigning Olympic champions. So just six boats in the K2 500 final. Attached for Leace and Schwartz of Austria to add to their K2 200 gold won yesterday. So I'm out, you know, back on the water, the veteran having picked up a brilliant bronze in the K1 200. Uh, Melina Anderson finishing fourth to miss out on the podium in K1. Anderson and Johansson picking up silver medal in the K2 200. And that was behind the powerful boat from Austria. They actually not taking part as Victoria Schwartz at the back took gold in the K1 200 final. A rare chance at the individual. That boat will be going to the Olympics. Two missing out, Chen and so particular. Stephanie Chen in the front narrowly missed out the Tokyo quota, the Asian qualifiers. And sadly, it was a similar story as it was for Jennifer Egan of Ireland. The latter speaking eloquently about the challenges for the smaller nations in how the qualifying does affect them a lot harder. You can uh, see that interview on the ICF canoe website but it's Victoria Schwartz who's looking for a third medal and this time in her strongest discipline 34 year old already has been to the Olympics way back in Beijing 2008 with Yvonne Schoering who she won a world gold with in Seged in 2011. Now paired with 30-year-old Leachi. As they look to tune up ahead of their task in Tokyo. So underway in the K2 Women's 500 final. And can anyone upset the Olympic Austrian boat? Well, Chen and So finishing sixth and ninth individually in the K1 200 final. Desperately trying to hold on to the Austrians' coattails. 
Already an early advantage for the Austrian pairing. Very calm and collected, quickly into their stride. Well, just keeping it nice and tight. And just slowly but surely pulling away, although strong. Showing on the outside from Argentina, Sweden. Just clinging to the back of the boat. There is the lineup Austria, Argentina, Mexico, Sweden at the moment. Missing out on the podium. Ramahino driving a brilliant performance from Argentina. The 40 year old looking to try and drive the duo. It looks like it's going to be a tough ass to outdo the Austrians. But a medal could very much be on the mark. Sweden with for surely too much to do, as it looks like being two South Americans on the podium. But it will be, as expected, Austrian gold. A third gold of the weekend for Victoria Schwartz. A second for the Austrian pairing. Tuned perfectly ahead of the Olympics in Tokyo this summer. Congratulations, a, a good day for Austria today. Uh, Anna, we haven't spoken to you yet. Yeah, it was, it was an okay race. Um, I think we did uh, some good races here in Russia. It's good for us to have some races, um, even if it's nationals or World Cups or anything. We are just happy to be racing again after the pandemic. And I'm very proud of Vicky winning the K1 200. She did an amazing job. I was very nervous more, more than if I'm racing myself. So. I'm very happy with how we can. And you know, you look like a boat that's going to Tokyo today. Yeah. Uh, it must feel really good paddling knowing you're already going. Yeah, it's it's a release when I see the girls racing the K1500 and the K1200 here. I was thinking, I don't want to be in that situation right now. It's so much stress and so much pressure on them. And there are so less quotas for so amazing many athletes. and. It's a shame, actually. There should be more athletes going and kayaking. Well, yeah. You're going, and that's the main thing. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I did mention that Jennifer Egan had made similar uh, observations. It's always tough in terms of the amounts that can go to Olympics, particularly during this pandemic. Every sport always wants more, and there's those sports looking from the outside in. But on the water, Leachi and Schwartz nearly a second ahead of the Argentinian boat as Latin America lock out the rest of the podium. And speaking of which, it's awards ceremony time this time for the C1 women's 200 meters. And then it's the turn of the long distance. K1 women, C1 men, and K1 men at a thousand meters.
дамы и господа. Церемония награждения второго этапа Кубка мира ICF на дистанцию С1. Каноэ-одиночка среди женщин на 200 метров начинается. Ladies and gentlemen, award ceremony ICF World Cup for the distance C1. Can a single women 200 meters is starting? Награждение проводит депутат Алтайского краевого законодательного собрания, генеральный директор Барнаульского завода АТИ, генеральный партнер этапа Кубка мира по гребле на байдарках и каноэ в Барнауле Артем Юрьевич Шамков. Внимание, вручение медали. Attention, the medals are given. Бронзовым призером становится. The bronze medalist is Irina Andreeva Russia. Серебряным призером становится The silver medalist is Maria Mayar Chile. Золотым призером становится The golden medalist is Yaris Ladies Kirulu Duboy Cuba. Медалистам вручаются цветы. And now the flowers are given to our winners. Дамы и господа, прошу всех выразить признание медалистам второго этапа в Кубке мира по гребле на байдарках и каноэ. Ladies and gentlemen, please express your recognition to the medalists of the second stage of ICF World Cup in canoe and kayaking. Дамы и господа, церемония награждения на дистанцию С1. Каноэ одиночка среди женщин на 200 метров завершена. Ladies and gentlemen, the award ceremony for the distance C1 women 200 meters is completed. Another medal for the host nation here in Barnal to enjoy. And C1 honors very much enjoyed by the rising Cuban star. Certainly expect to see plenty more from Cerrillo in the years to come. Could be a fascinating battle with Nevin Harrison. Two young paddlers who battled out last week at Seged. This time Cerrillo left to her own devices to take gold. Now the K1 1000 as we really take to the long distance Tamara Sisipis of Hungary the reigning world champion An interesting field here ahead of the K1000 final here at the World Cup 2 in Barnau
Legata Fantini, K1 500 FC gold medalist. It was three years ago in the World Cup too. Hoping for some FA success. No tough task on the outside. Alongside lane three is Maria Verik. 2018 world under 23,000 bronze medalist. Won a K1000 silver last week in Seged to improve on a World Cup bronze a year ago. Can she continue that upward trajectory? Well, Govan Sinovic, the first Croatian woman to qualify for the Olympics for K1, would have been delighted to see her young compatriots, Vanessa Tut, join her in C1. Caitlin McElroy, 36-year-old, one FA medal to her name, a K2000 silver in 2013, the World Cup 2 in Rachetse, the Czech Republic. What a time for young paddler from Thailand alongside Anieska Paladova, herself better known as a six-time wild water world champion, three times of Europe. The 22-year-old having already won nine golds across world and European championships. Looking to make a splash here in the sprints. So underway in the K1 women's 1,000 meter final. Russia looking to Kostro Metina, 27 year old. With just two senior events under her belt. Just missing out on the podium in the K2000 of the World Championship Zeged two years ago also having competed at the marathon discipline 13th in the k2 25,800 won't have to exert quite as much effort here but a great chance for a sprint fa medal here on home water Fantini has mentioned a K1500 FC gold medal three years ago. Evidently, COVID has somewhat depleted the fields as to who can compete from the best in the world. There's a strong start from Fantini way out in lane two. Half a boat advantage over Virik, 21 year old, 2018 world under 23 bronze medalist at this discipline. So far, the outer lane set the pace. And now Virik has decided it's her turn to lead from the front. And a long, long way to go as they cross the halfway stage. So Norway's young gun Virik leading out. 26 year old Fantini from Italy. Keeping it calm and loose. Almost riding like the Flintstones, the knees pumping. And just increasing her advantage over Fantini, slowly but surely. A 
Well, now really putting pressure on the rest of the field and they're going to hit back. Anna Maria Gorvinsinovic, Croatian who earned that historic women's Olympic place for Croatia way, way back, almost as far back as Virik is ahead into the final section. Strong fight, though, from Aneska Palastova. Incredibly, 22, 19 medals at senior level in wild water. And now battling for a place at the podium in the canoe sprints. And it looks like she's battling Fantini for a silver medal because surely no one's got the jetpack needed to catch the young Virik from Norway as she continues to stretch her lead. Fantini desperately trying to hold on for a silver medal as there's a battle for the podium. Kostro Metinia battling, but she, the Russian, is being left behind. And it's a powerful run from Palodova. It's going to be enough for silver, but it's Virik who heads to the line for domination over the 1,000 metres. Superb gold medal for Norway. A big moment for 22-year-old Paladova. Has been a dominating force in wild water, but gets an FA canoe sprint silver medal. But it's Virik who won silver last week in Zeged, bronze the year before. This time, she's continued that upward trajectory into gold. Maria, a thousand meters is a long way. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> How did it feel out there today? Uh, it was uh, very hard at the end, uh, but in the head win, but I did my best and yeah, focusing on myself. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit cold today too. Was it hard to prepare for the race? Uh, I had a lot of clothes on, on the warm up, <laughs> and then I took my spray deck off before I. <laughs> Well, yeah. you've got a gold medal now in the World Cup, so congratulations. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, does it get much better? Bronze in 2020, silver last week. And now topping the podium, Maria Verik with gold. Paladova, 19 senior medals in wild canoeing. Now with a silver medal and a World Cup in sprints, and Fantini of Italy grabbing herself a bronze. So the C1 men now taking their chance on the 1,000 metres. Hopefully they'll have kept warm. Kieros Dos Santos, the world champion, will likely be happy to be avoiding such chilly and wet conditions. Sebastian Brendel was dominant again last week in Seged. Not in attendance here as we see the start list for the C1 1000. Canada yet to see any success here. Craig Spence to try and change that.
Giancarlo Tacchini, an Olympic finalist. In the end of the B final, the Italian. And he is lining up beside the young guns from Cuba. Elia Cordoba. Twenty years of age alongside Jorge. Showing his guns as big as his smile. Cordoba just missing out on the medal last week in Seged. Finishing fourth behind Martin Fuxa of the Czech Republic. As Scheibner produced a stunning performance in place of world champion Brendel. Edging out Geros Dos Santos. A chance here. Someone to step forward and grab the World Cup headlines. Pelier Cordoba will hope to be making up for disappointment last week with a medal here. So underway. In the men's C1 1000 final. Fast start from the German boat of Peter Kretschmer. Certainly, Germany had a fabulous performance in Seged. And young guns who came to the fore. 29 year old Kretschmer. Certainly wouldn't necessarily take that tagline, but looking for. A rare German victory this weekend. Clearly a chance for some of the lesser lights of canoe sprints to take effect. But now the strength and power of Pelier Cordoba starting to make an impact, an imprint on this thousand meters. Certainly Verik and others testing to the tough conditions, the chill, but it's heating up in this thousand meter finals. Pelia Cordoba makes his move crisply and calmly driving through the water. 20 year old, as mentioned, finished fourth in the World Cup won last week. They did finish third in the C1 500 to earn a bronze medal, so it wasn't without rewards. Clearly wanting that thousand World Cup medal and particularly to fit the color of his boat and he is in a rush to finish this early. Fernando Dejan Jorge, his compatriot, trying to keep tabs. But at the moment, utter domination from the C1. Thousand junior world champion. And the 20 year old. Certainly has a huge future. And leading the way, Can Cuba make it a one two? Fernando Dejan Jorge Enriquez, 22 year old, already heavily decorated. A four time world silver medalist between C2 and C1 at the longer distances. C2 silver in Seged. Won that alongside Sergei Torres in Seged two years ago. 
the 2019 C2000. Pan American champion looks on and his young compatriot. Absolutely dominant. Well, the rest of the field just cannot live with his pace and power. As Cuba looked to be heading towards gold and silver. There's a late push from the Polish boat. Well, Victor Glazunov to try and get on the podium, but it's Cuba gold and Cuba silver. And in the end, Olympian Carlo Tacchini of Italy gets himself on the podium, but that is job done. The Italian flag flies proudly for a bronze medal, but it's Cuba who dominates. And it's that golden feeling for Jose Ramon Pelier Cordoba. Congratulations, a gold medal for Cuba. Thank you, happy, happy. Uh, 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 it's a long race, a very hard race today. No, no, uh, thingy. no speak English. Uh, in Spanish. In Spanish? Spanish? Yeah. yeah. How do you feel in Spanish? Estoy contento, muy contento. Well done, thank you very much. Well, does it take a master translator to know that Pelier Cordoba very happy with his result? 4.46 seconds ahead of his compatriot Jorge and Tacchini grabs another bronze for Italy as Schera also grabbed one at K1 500. I'll be hoping for more in our final race of their live coverage here from the World Cup 2 in Bernal. The fans here continue to brave the conditions here in Siberia. And now, we saw Panik Kopash on home water last week in Seged and Marcus Waltz with gold in the K4. Not in attendance, but it's certainly plenty of attention for the surprise package. Dong Zhang of China. As mentioned, he spent most of his paddling career in team boats. But my oh my, did he take advantage of the opportunity to paddle in K1, securing China a 1,000 meter quota for Tokyo. That to the devastation of Italian Andrea Schera, who also races to try and add to his K1 500 bronze medal. The Parish duo, Stavno and Bill 
hoping to grab a medal for their country. But there is Dong Zhang. It was looking all scared up in that Olympic qualifier. But Zhang just came out of nowhere, threw his boat forward. And then the amazement to see that he had indeed earned that Olympic quota. Win or nothing. And that meant second was nothing to Andrea Sierra. Does have a World Cup bronze to his name, but now can he make some amends in his mind in this World Cup attempt? So Zhang and Skera going at it again. Will one of the others in the field step forward in this World Cup 2 event in Bernal? So underway in the K1 men 1,000 metre final. A 23-year-old Otero from Uruguay, his first senior individual event in the 500, went out strong. At the moment, it's lane five that leads the way. Andres Olejnik, and he looked on with the Lithuanian battle for 200-meter Olympic honors as Maldonis earned gold and the ticket that he'd earned yesterday. Olenek, a good nick to try and get himself a medal. Certainly tight across this 1,000 metres to the K1. Certainly wasn't the case in the C1. And a real battle along the middle of the line. Stabno, the 29-year-old from Poland. In a four-way battle here, it looks like being at the halfway stage. Stabno was eighth in the European Olympic qualifier. For the thousand meters has a slight edge over lane four and the newly won Olympic quarter for China from Dong Zhang look to make an impact once again. Oh, huge roars from the sidelines. Coming through is Zhang once again, Dong Zhang. Well buoyed by that historic grab in the Olympic qualifier. He's now continuing to shine. A battle here for the medals. It was a photo finish with Skera for the Olympic spot. It doesn't look like it's going to be 
necessary for one here, although Olejnik desperately trying to make one so. But it's Zhang powering away to the line to win by almost a boat length ahead of the Lithuanian and Sweden snatching a bronze medal. But after his Olympic heroics on Friday, it's World Cup gold on Saturday. Nick said he tried to reel him in, but Zhang, so what a weekend uh, for the 24 year old. Another, another yeah, thank you, ahead. thank you, thank you. See you here. Zhongguo, I'm Chinese. Yeah. I, I love Russia, Furious. Everybody. Why am I here? Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> well, a stunning performance from Zhang. Incredibly, his first ever individual final A, and yet he has blown away the field, holding off Olejnik for gold. Lithuania with silver. Dennis Kernin of Sweden managing to hold out for bronze. His roar from Dong Zhang, one of six lucky enough to book the final tickets for Tokyo. But it's been World Cup success, one out here in Bernal, Russia. <laughs> 